from Jamie Ray Vintage. Today's DIY is an upcycle collab with YouTube Mommy Meetup. Check the link below for all the other upcycle ideas from all my friends. For my project, I decided to do this amazing dresser. <laughs> okay, so it's not so amazing. I bought this dresser at Savers for 20 bucks. When I got it, it had some ugly stickers on it and it's missing a whole ton of detail. You can see all the holes in the drawers. And we're gonna take this ugly 70s dresser and turn it into something fun. I'm gonna teach you how to do correct prep work, how to add some molding, and how to use putty. So that way we can make this dresser into something fun and modern. Today I'm gonna to show you the products that we're gonna be using. We're gonna be using this lightweight spackle called Crack Shot to cover up the imperfections and to putty up our holes because we're gonna be putting on new hardware. Um, I already used scrubbing bubbles and my putty knife to scrape off any gross stuff that was on here and get it nice and clean. Somebody had had a candle on here and it dripped down the front, so I used my putty knife to scrape it off and then scrubbing bubbles to clean it off and to get any residue off. Then we have our sanding block. I'm gonna go ahead and go over the whole thing with my sander. I'll probably use my rotary sander, but if you don't have one, a 100 grit sanding block would be just fine. We have our Fairy Chalk Mother Bonding Primer. Because this is mostly laminate and MDF, I'm gonna be using Bonding Primer first. And then we're gonna use our Dress Blues, which is a gorgeous navy blue, and finish it off with polycrylic. Let's get started. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and putty up our dings that are in this dresser. I'm using my Crack Shot Lightweight Putty, or Lightweight Spackle, and I'm just gonna apply it on here with my putty knife and try to smooth it over. Okay, I'm just smoothing out my Lightweight when it dries and I'll sand it smooth. Sometimes you have to do more than one uh, time with the lightweight because when it dries it shrinks a little or you realize you didn't get it on there perfect and that's fine so I'm just gonna get it on here as thick as I can and smooth out where it doesn't need to be if you want it to be perfect and you can work outside in a well ventilated area you can go ahead and use Bondo which is a two-part process but it is really stinky and since it's winter time I can't work outside or I should say I won't work outside Zeb usually does so I'm just using this lightweight and for this little bit that I'm repairing it'll be just fine next I'm going to remove all my hardware this sometimes I use hardware like this but because I'm going to be using a more modern design and adding trim I've got to remove this hardware so that way I can give it an updated look. Only problem is when you remove hardware, you get these lovely holes from where the hardware was removed. Now this hole here is gonna be covered by trim because we're gonna have trim that goes all the way around. So I'm not gonna worry about that one, but I am gonna putty this hole. And it's the same process as I did on the top. I'm gonna to get my lightweight spackle on my spatula or scraper, whatever. I've used a bench scraper from my kitchen before, so just a, a straight edge surface works. And I'm just gonna poke it down into my hole and make sure it's nice and smooth and then remove any excess. Saves me from sanding it later. I know it's on there nice and good. You want to make sure that there's not any bubbles or holes where you've got the part that you're going to be covering up because when you sand it then it'll leave a little divot. So this is about right just like that. Let it dry for a couple of hours and then come back over and sand it and I'll show you how to do that. I'm going to go ahead and remove all this hardware and putty up all my holes and then we'll come back and show you how to sand it and add the trim. Okay, so we're out in the garage. We're just going to smooth the top of this off where the extra putty is so that those holes are nice and flush and you won't see them. And we'll go from there. You probably don't want to use one of those foam pad sanders because sometimes it'll dish that out and it won't be smooth but that is nice and flush when we paint it you won't even see it. 
Okay, so our lightweight is dry and Zeb sanded over it to make it nice and smooth and we're ready to prime. We're gonna go ahead and prime the whole dresser before I put the wood on because the wood doesn't need primer for the chalk paint to stick onto it and it's much easier to paint a flat drawer than one that has the wood on. So once we put the wood on, then we'll put our final color on. So I'm gonna use my bonding primer. If you're interested in buying bonding primer or fairy chalk by the paint, be sure to go to jamierayvintage.com. It is all on there. And you're just gonna put one coat, nice and even, around all the edges and across the top. I'm gonna to do that to all these drawers and this dresser, and then we'll let it dry in and be ready to add the trim. All right, so we've got our trim all built. This is just small piece of wood. They were nice and thin, pretty ununiform. They're the ends that I get. I've got a local cabinet maker and he just puts all these little pieces of wood, usually about an inch and a half by an inch or so. Um, so I do have to cut them down a little bit. And then I use a router to get this detail here. We decided we wanted to do the detail on the inside and the handle's gonna go right here in the center. And you can see it's not quite uniform. I'll, uh, I'll use a belt sander to bring that down a little bit and it'll look nice and even. So I'm just gonna staple these on and attach them. Right now they're just sitting on here. And then when we paint them, you won't even know the difference that it wasn't all part of the original piece. I've got my uh, staple gun here. I actually have nails instead of staples. They're an inch and three eighths. So they'll go into this really nice. I've got it set at 90 PSI so it drives down through this wood really well. When I'm all done, I'll take more of that putty and we'll just put it in here and those you won't see those at all. Once we get this painted, this detail will pick up a lot more and that'll sand out nice and smooth. Okay guys, Zeb worked his magic on our drawers and we're ready to paint. If you don't have access to a router and you want to add trim to your doors, you could just go ahead and go to the hardware store and buy trim and then cut it down to size. We just used some wood that we found on the side of the road from a local cabinet maker and it was free, so that's what we used. All right, so our next step is gonna be that we're gonna um, go ahead and paint our project. We're using Fairy Chalk Mother in Dress Blues. This is the fun part where the color actually goes on. It's a beautiful navy color. It's nice and rich. It's a true navy and it goes on nice and smooth. It'll probably take two coats to cover this completely. If I had used a white primer, it probably would have covered in like one and a half maybe, but since it's white, it's gonna take a couple coats to cover up that white. So I'm gonna get this all painted and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done with my paint. of paint are dry, I'm going to go ahead and get to the distressing and smoothing. If you don't have a rotary sander like this, you can also use a sanding block. This is going to take probably four times longer, so I'm going to give you a brief little show, show you how to do it, but you're just going to go with the grain of how you painted it in the same direction, and then just go back and forth and along the edge, and you're going to do that to the whole piece. You'll see that it's starting to wear on the edge and that that's what you want. And because I primed this, some of the white will pop through, which is also what I want. So rather than using this by hand and doing the whole thing, I'm gonna use my rotary sander because it's a lot faster and I can take off a little bit more with the distressing. Now that we've got it all sanded, 
it is nice and smooth and it's ready for our sealer. I'm gonna be using polycrylic and satin to seal my piece. Sometimes I use my brush to put on polyurethane and when I do, I always make sure to use a brush made for polyurethane. This is my Purdy brush and I only use it for polyurethane. Never use a brush that you've used on paint to seal with because then you'll get chunks of paint in your sealant and you don't want that. You'll want to do at least two coats of sealant, maybe even three depending on how much use it'll get. And you're going to use an extra fine sandpaper in between sealant coats so that way you can smooth it out nice and smooth. We're going to go ahead and spray all this and we'll show you what it looks like when we're done. We're installing the drawer pulls now. I've got this measured to center right where I want it and we're just going to do, drill two little holes. These used to be kind of a brass color and we painted them white to kind of match with the rest of the dresser. It looks better with the dress blues. So we'll just go ahead and screw this on. Make sure I'm still lined up. Twisted it just a little bit. dresser. I love the way this DIY flip turned out. We took an old dresser that was really boring and added some great detail to it and some new handles. I think it's got a new lease on life. Be sure to check the link below to check out all the other YouTube Mommy Meetup DIY collabs and give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Jamie Ray Vintage for more DIY. <laughs>